hello and welcome to those of you who are jumping in for our uh, Power BI user group out of Milwaukee. Um, my name is Mike Carlo, one of the PUG leaders of the group. Uh, today we have with us Reza Rad from Radicad.com, who is a incredible MVP. Has you'll see by his wall how long he's been involved with the MVP program. Uh, he's a great guy. He's been a staple for a number of years. Um, super knowledgeable has an amazing tool called the Power BI Helper as well. So if you haven't checked out his tool, we'll have to make sure we get your links for that. Um, let me just kick it over here to Seth real quick, and he can also do his intro, and we'll move over to Reza. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, hi, my name is Seth. Uh, I hang out with Mike quite a bit. We're uh, your Power BI user group leaders. Uh, both uh, have the privilege of sharing the Power BI MVTP title, and we're uh, the co-owners of Power BI.tips. Um, we always keep things a little loose and informal, but tonight we're taking it to the next level due to some insane work hours that I'm uh, kind of <laughs> hanging on with Mike as we, we go through some pretty major migrations at work. Um, and as Mike said, we're super excited to have our good friend Reza here uh, as our speaker tonight. And uh, as always, we're going to have uh, basically our, our session with Reza where we're all going to su have super excitement about what's, uh, what we're talking about, data sets and data flows. And then uh, we'll kick it over into a separate Teams meeting where we can have some informal conversation and uh, you'll have your opportunity to ask us questions. And I believe Reza is going to be able to hang out with us for a little bit as well. So we're really excited to have him here. Kicking it over to Reza. Reza, welcome. Uh, thank you very much for attending today. Um, we're excited to, to sit, hang out and chit chat with you. This is gonna be great. Thank you. Uh, good, uh, I think it is evening, let's say. Good evening, good, yes, it is good, an evening yeah, here. Good evening <laughs> <laughs> to everyone joining us. Thank you, I really appreciate being here. Thanks Mike and Seth for the opportunity, not just here for all the, exciting things they do also for the Power BI community. Power BI Tips is a great hub for learning everything about Power BI, which is fantastic, and some great tools over there. Uh, I'm Reza. I'm like based in New Zealand, pre-COVID-19. My <laughs> my <laughs> office was airplane flying around. Uh, after COVID-19, I'm sitting here mainly doing conferences over like a camera. I'm talking mainly to camera, like uh, audience are in the <laughs> <laughs> no, like you've done a great job staging the background. The background's like very professional <laughs> now. A lot of the MVP things. That's awesome. Yeah, these are all paperwork. Don't, <laughs> don't mention that. It looks uh, good. It looks good. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, I'm also um, writing blogs and uh, doing some like video, YouTube videos as well under Radicat website and um, author of some Power BI books. Um, so my, my main area mainly is Power BI, everything to do with Power BI and uh, happy to be here with you all today. Now Reza, you haven't always been Power BI. Uh, you started in, in in SQL? Was that kind of more of your space originally? And you kind of said, ah, oh, I see the light. Power BI is there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Actually, if, if you want to like begin it from start, I've been like a C Sharp developer, like oh, like okay. VB6 developer. Let's talk about that. Like that, that, that. Like I've been VB6 developer with SQL awesome. Server 6.5. Holy Back cow. In, that was like right after I came out of university, I started work with these. And uh, then gradually moved to like .NET development things. I've been like working with that, but I liked SQL Server a lot. So I moved into SQL Server from the SQL Server aspects. Uh, like there are lots of things like DBA, database development and things like that. Then I gradually moved to like BI part of it, especially like the fun DTS part. packages, like old ah. in SQL Server 2000. Yeah, uh, they came in 2005, like SSIS packages, like sure. uh, analysis services, reporting services. Those were like where I've been living <laughs> most of my days, those days. Yeah. Uh, like from like 2010, started gradually towards like to Power Pivot when it first came out. A lot of people were, were excited, like myself. Uh, I, I still remember the very first uh, time that I've seen Power Query. Uh, like the editor of Power Query. I've been in a conference in Hong Kong, like that That was called Tech Days Hong Kong those days. And yep. Matt Mason, 
who was actually like creator of that at that time was also in that conference and he took me over his laptop and showed me like look at this tool it, it is called like data explorer <laughs> wow it's an for excel and that's yeah, data explorer that's right <laughs> yeah that's wow <laughs> that's cool Yes, yeah, I, I really like that. And and that after like a few months, that became called as Power Query, like oh, which is okay, which is what we have these days. So so like gradually, I moved towards Power BI, sneaking my way around. <laughs> to get <into> the Power <laughs> Well, I, that was the moment right there was the very moment that that Microsoft decided to power everything. It was Power BI, <laughs> Power you know Power Query, Power Maps. Yeah, power everything, maps. Yep. everything has to have a power yeah. to it. Let's put the power in everything. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> That's awesome. Awesome. Well, your topic today, uh, Reza, run us over your topic today. What are we going to be talking about? Sure. Yeah, I'm going to talk about data flows and data set. My favorite topic, actually, especially because it helps in like building a full architecture. Uh, do you want me to start sharing my screen? And Going over yeah, it? go ahead. Let's do okay, it. Okay, sure. So I've let's... been working with some data flows myself, so I'm I'm curious to see how much of this I've been doing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Okay. So let me know. And I'll put it here. I, let me I've know where to see my slide. I see your screen. Let me get you uh, configured here, and then we will. The Teams production is not the top notch. Like it's a little bit clicky and a little <laughs> bit slow for me. So I got I got to work on it a bit. But we go. Slides are up. I think you're good to go, Reza. Um, okay. Take it away. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so uh, this is my favorite topic these days, like talking about data flows and shared data sets, not only because I'm mainly like a Power Query fan behind the scene and data flow is part of Power Query, but also because this helps in building a Power BI architecture that works um in uh, small organizations and big organizations a lot of um let's say um comments we get from big organizations is that power bi is like a self-service tool it's like a silo tool i'm not going to use that in my organization wide and things like that so that is why i like this topic to talk about it i've already introduced myself so i'll skip this slide just mentioning that um my um, Contact information is down in the slides below. I'll make sure that I share the link with Mike and Seth. They will share it with you somehow in the YouTube or somewhere. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, like, I got to I got to know, like, what are you describing there? Whatever you're describing, it's really big with the hands. You're like, oh, it's just, this is a massive data model that was <laughs> poorly written. I'm going to teach you how to make it better, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. So talking about um, talking about the uh, data set and uh, data flow, it's important to know why this has been created. Um, and it is important to understand it based on the persona of the user who is using it. Uh, let's say we take the persona of a single developer, a single business analyst, single developer. This is a person who is uh, responsible for building report. Uh, for his team, her team, let's say, to be more diverse. Uh, and uh, this person is the only developer in the team or in the company. Uh, it might have multiple users, but they are mainly like end users. They are not going to develop reports, not even visualizations. They are just going to uh, use the result, uh, slice and dice the result, but within the exact uh, frame that this report developer has built. In scenario like this, Power BI is Perfect. Actually, Power BI came with this promise to be a self-service tool, and that is how it works. You just download the Power BI desktop. is a tool that you can uh, connect to different data sources, Excel, SQL Server, Oracle. You grab the data, import it into Power BI. You do data uh, mashup, data cleaning using Power Query, and then uh, create the tables in the form that you want. You create relationship between those, write calculations in DAX, visualize it, publish it into the service and share it with your users. Uh, that's all happening in one solution. You have one PBIX file, which is the entire source code of your solution. Everything lives there. It's fast to develop. It's easy to maintain. It's agile. Every time you want to go and change it, you just uh, open the Power BI file again in Power BI desktop, apply some changes, publish it, and, uh, and that's your maintenance. All easy to go. However, if we talk about a scenario of multiple developers, 
or even talking about the scenario of one single developer working with multiple files. Both these scenarios are a little bit different. In scenario of multiple developers, you have different challenges then, and, and different challenges and scenario is different. You cannot have like one file shared across many people. Uh, these are some of the challenges that uh, you have with a single file. With a single file, you cannot really have multiple developers working at the same time. Uh, if I build something uh, and then I want to share it with Mike or Seth so they can also apply some changes, I have to stop applying changes. I have to send the file to them, the PBIX file, either through a shared folder or something like that. Then they go and apply some changes. They save it. They send it back to me. And in the middle of that, if I suddenly made some changes, this is going to be a chaos how to actually combine these. We don't really have a tool, not a, let's say, built-in tool or way to merge changes coming from different uh, developers. This can be a good idea for like a community tool, by the way, uh, but uh, we don't have it right now, which means that multiple developers can't really use one PBIX file. Uh, to work in a parallel scenario. That leads one file to become bigger and bigger. It grows uh, suddenly, like you start with two tables, then five tables, 20 tables, hundreds of tables. Uh, I've seen files that are so big that every time you just open it, it takes like half an hour on the machine to load it up, like uh, tons of measures. There are so many measures that if you click on creating a new measure, it takes like 10 minutes waiting for that <laughs> box to come up. That's crazy. Yeah, and, and, and even on visualizations, I've seen uh, files with like over 300 visualization pages. I don't know, is there any limitation on creating the number of visualization pages? Pages, but over 300 visualization pages. Oh and gosh, I would never want to manage that. That would be impossible to manage. It is. Managing it and finding where it is, like it, it's really hard. Uh, you can use things such as like buttons and things like that to help navigate between, but still going and finding a page, sometimes you recreate a page because you don't realize that that, that page is already there, right? Uh, it, uh, the whole maintenance of your Power BI solution would be uh, really chaotic using a single file. Lots of duplicate, lots of um, problems in maintaining it. This would be really high maintenance solution, a solution that you don't want to maintain it after a year or two, right? Uh, so single file is a good way to start for that persona that I explained first, but not for the persona of uh, multiple developers or for the persona of one developer working on multiple solutions. It is only good for persona of one developer working only on one reporting solution, which usually happens really rarely. Uh, now, talking about that uh, single file challenge, let's take one of these challenges. Let's say I want to use one query um, we call it a table actually. In Power Query, it's called Query. Uh, one query or one table, I want to use it in multiple files. That happens actually. Imagine this scenario. Let's say I've built a sales Power BI file. Mm, I've been in the sales team or sales team asked me to go and create a Power BI file. Now, uh, I went and spent some time uh, creating the tables, like I've created a, a date table because I need that usually in most of uh, the BI uh, reports. I've created a customer table. I grabbed the data of products and sales. So I built something like a star schema reports and anything like that. People have been happy with that. I've published that solution, revised it multiple times, and the sales team been happy. Then they told the warehouse team that Reza built a Power BI report on the sales. Uh, you want to go and check it out. They come and they they check it and they lock it. They come to me and say, we also want a Power BI report. I said, yeah, that's fine. And then I go start building a Power BI report for them because this is like totally different area. That was sales, this is inventory. I go ahead and create like a different file. Now in that file, I'll bring things such as the warehouse information, the transaction movement of the warehouse, the inventory movement. But I also need some of the tables that I had in my previous file, like the product table. I had the product table in my sales PBIX file and to generate that, I probably joined two, three tables from the source system, merged them together, cleaned some data to build that product table. Now I need exactly the same product table. 
or date table. Date table is something that you need in most of the BI uh, reporting solutions anyway. So what happens for these uh, like queries that I need in another file? You can go and copy a query from one PBIX file to another file. You can just control C, come here to control V. Uh, that will bring that query and any other like query dependencies around it that will bring them all. Uh, that is not a problem and you'll get that date table and product table in the inventory file easily. But the problem is that as soon as you do this, then you have your source code in two different places. You have part of your source code in uh, the date table, let's imagine, in the sales PBIX file, another in the inventory PBIX file. Now that means that every time you go and change it in one of these, let's say you realize that you need to also go and add um, working days or holidays in your date table. You go and add it in the sales PBIX file. Now you should go and add it in the inventory PBIX file. It, it makes your maintenance uh, uh, a little bit more effort. And another thing is that this date table processed actually twice, once for your inventory table, once for your sales table, where actually the date table is the date table, right? It doesn't really change for this file or that file. Why shouldn't you process it once and just reuse it, right? Uh, and it's become even much bigger problem when you have like three files, five files, 10 files. If you have 10 different PBIX files, then sharing a query or a table between all of these would be a big hassle. So that is why Dataflow is created. Dataflow is the solution for not only this, some other scenarios as well, but for this, this Dataflow can work pretty well. How Dataflow works or what is Dataflow? I'll go through that uh, quickly. Dataflow is a power query process that runs in cloud, independent from uh, a lot of people when I ask them what is the data flow they tell me that it is power query in cloud mm, not exactly because when you build a power bi report your power bi data set is using power query when you publish it to cloud it is power query in cloud that is not a data flow data flow is when the uh, then the process is independent from the Power BI. When, when I say independent, it means that in Power BI dataset, when Power Query runs, the result loads into the in-memory storage of Power BI. In Dataflow, when the query runs, the result does not store in Power BI, it stores somewhere else. It is independent from Power BI. And that is why we have the concept of Power Platform data flows, because it can work totally outside of Power BI environment. And it is going to be like, uh, probably after a while, just be called data flows, not Power BI data flows or Power Platform data flows. That's my guess, uh, because that works across many platforms. So if it is independent from Power BI, if it is, stores the data, but it doesn't really store it in Power BI, where does it store the data at the moment? And we are talking about Power BI data flows because Power Platform data flows uh, stores uh, storage is a little bit different. Power BI data flows storage is in Azure Data Lake storage in uh, folders. We call we call that folder structure a common data model. It's a specific folder structure that we have like one folder per workspace, then one folder per data flow under workspace, then one folder per entity. And for each entity, we have a bunch of CSV files. It's like that. It's called um, common data model structure, but in fact, it's CSV files, right? Um, and there are some discussions that might be some other storage options available later on, but for now, this is the only storage option for Power BI data flows. For Power Platform data flows, we also have command data services. That's also another option for those. Now, uh, when, when I talk about this, uh, you might ask, what about the data lake subscription? I don't really have a data lake subscription. How can I use data flow? Does it mean I can't? No, in fact, you can. Even with a normal Power BI Pro account, you don't even need pre premium. Even with a normal Power BI Pro account, you can still use Dataflow because Dataflow will use an internal storage, part of your storage that you got for your Power BI account. Let's say you are using you are, you have Power BI Pro. That means you have 10 gigabytes space. Part of that is an Azure Data Lake storage, which you can use. Now, this internal Azure Data Lake storage can't be accessed through any other means, but it can be accessed through Dataflow uh, and you can use it. If you have your own 
data lake subscription, like external data lake subscription. You can connect it to uh, data flow. That's called like external data flows, and that would work fine. You don't have any limitation on the size, and you can access it outside of that environment, which would work perfectly fine. But if you don't have it, that's still absolutely fine. Uh, the demo that I show you today would be with uh, my Power BI Pro account without having Azure Data Lake sub subscription separately, so it would work just fine. And then what is the final result? You have like data flow, storing the data, transforming the data and storing it into CSV file in Azure Data Lake storage. Now from Power BI, you can actually get data from the result of this uh, using get data from Power BI data flows. That is an option that uh, is available in Power BI desktop easily. So that means that if we go back to that solution, I've been uh, that let's say challenge I've been explaining, we can solve it like this. We can have a data flow processing all of shared tables. This can be date dimension, this can be product dimension or anything. All of those shared tables um, only once, it just processes it once. That means this will transform that data only once, not more than that. And then in as many as PBIX files I want to use it, I just get data from it there would be a load process from that data flow into the Power BI in memory storage. So we have still that load process, but load would be much faster than transform and load together. That's one thing. Another thing is that because my you know, date dimension or any other shared tables is processed inside data flow, my source code is only in one place inside that data flow. Whenever I want to change it, I just go and change it in that place everywhere else would get the new structure. Everything would work just fine. Uh, data flow can be used for uh, making your refresh time at the time of development faster, uh, because if you have Power BI Desktop, you have all of your heavy lifting Power Query transformation inside Power BI Desktop, your refresh time usually takes a little bit long. Let's say your refresh time takes, let's say 20 minutes because you have a lot of heavy lifting transformation. Now, if you do those heavy lifting transformation in data flow, you are separating the transformation from the load. Uh, your overall time might be still the same, but your uh, data load time in Power BI Desktop would be faster. As a result, you can develop uh, Power BI solutions faster. Although there are some ways to make your uh, data transformations faster in the data flow as well using compute identity and enhanced compute engine and things like that, which we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, you can use data flow to create like a data warehouse structure. A lot of users who come to Power BI, they don't really have the luxury of having um, licenses for SQL Server or having Azure SQL database. They don't really have uh, the license or neither the skill set to create a data warehouse. But using Dataflow, you can actually build that data warehouse. You build your data warehouse inside Azure Data Lake using a bunch of um, data flows. Each data flow can process one or more than one uh, entity or tables. And then that would be your data warehouse. You don't really need a separate service, a separate tool for that. All of that can happen in Power BI, and this is uh, Power Query, which uh, a Power BI user should be able to work with. Okay, now let me show you one quick demo of the data flow. Here I have a Power BI file, and this is a sales Power BI file. I have the sales table, customer table, and the product table. Um, I'm missing a date table. I'm not going to use, let's say, the built-in date table. The reason for that is I want some specific things such as fiscal dates, uh, fiscal year, fiscal quarter, things like that, which I'm not going to get it with the uh, default date table. So I need to create a date table. Now I have this, um, I have this little script that can give me the date table. And this script is available in Radicat website. You can just go and download it from there. This is a Power Query script that if I copy it, if I create like a new blank query, that will give me a date table just like that. But I'm not going to do it here because if I do it here, then later on, if I decide to change that date table, I have to go and change it in every Power BI file that I used it. I'm going to build that date table inside 
data flow and then reuse it uh, in here. That means uh, my source code would be only in the data flow. So to create a data flow, you need to go to Power BI website. Data flow is the website or service only com component at the moment. There is no way to create it. Even you cannot create it from the desktop. Later on, there might be some ways of doing that, but not now. Uh, at the moment, you should only go to the website to create something like that. So I'll go to the to one of the workspaces. This should be in an organizational workspaces. Then I go ahead and create a new data flow. This is how you go ahead and create a new data flow. Now, uh, there are some different ways of creating it. I'm focusing on simple things at the moment, so uh, creating it with adding a new entity. Now, this will bring like a Power Query get data experience. If you have worked with Power BI Desktop, you've seen something like this in Power BI Desktop. When you say get data, there are like different sources that you can choose and get data from. Uh, this is kind of the same thing. You can choose any of these sources. I can choose, for example, SQL Server database. I can enter SQL Server um, address and the database. If it is uh, located on-premises, I choose the on-premises gateway and things like that. In this case, because this is um, the date table is not really sourced from anywhere, it's just uh, automatically generated. I just copy it and use a blank query for that. Now here I'm going to paste it. Now this is the script for date table. I can even customize it. I can say start from this year to this year. This is the start of fiscal year, start of week. I can customize all of those, but for now we'll keep it as is. And no gateway is needed. I just click on next. This will load the Power Query online experience, uh, similar to Power Query in Power BI Desktop, uh, with a few changes, very small changes, but uh, in general, it is very similar to that. So this is my preview of the data here. Uh, like there are a few changes. One of the changes is that this preview doesn't show you more than 100 rows which is something you won't realize unless you scroll down and see that there is 100 rows limitation. Now, a lot of these things are going to be changed because Power Query Online is under heavy improvements. Um, but here I see all my steps, everything listed here. I can even apply some more transformations using all the transformations options at the top. I'm going to call this table date table one data flow can include more than one entity. I can have a product entity, I can have a customer entity, I can have sales entity. All of these are possible to be added here. Um, and then I save and close this. For this example, this table is enough. I save it. I'm going to call this one Power BI Tips Data Flow. Yeah, we get our own data flow and it'll be yes. forever in your tenant. I like it. <laughs> And so I have, I, have, I have a question yep. online. So while you're going in there, uh, and I want to confirm the answer, sure. uh, Jordan asks, how is this, the data security controlled inside the data flow? And I, I want to answer like the, the security is based on the workspace kind of, that's kind of how the linkage works there. And maybe you know some more details around that, Reza. Yes, consider, consider exactly like what you mentioned, consider the data flow like a database but this database is located inside your Power BI tenant, inside a workspace in your Power BI tenant. So if you want to share this database called Dataflow, if you want to share it with someone, you have to share the workspace, either view access or either edit access. If someone doesn't have access to that workspace, they don't have access to that data. Correct. And you can't, you can't go into that workspace and try and get the data because you don't have access at the workspace level, correct? Yes, yeah, okay. correct. Excellent, great question. Thank you. Uh, uh, another thing about data flow, uh, like a little different uh, compared to Power BI Desktop, is that in Power BI Desktop, when you uh, go to transformation, when you go to Power Query Editor, you do the transformation. When you say close and apply, that will uh, do the transformations, applies it on the data source, you get the data loaded into the Power BI. Here, it doesn't happen like that. You should refresh your data. A lot of questions I get from people starting working with Dataflow is that I've created this 
uh, data flow, but I can't get data from it. It's blank because this is not refreshed, right? You have to refresh it, either um, schedule it to refresh. Now, where did it go? Yep, here it is. Power BI tips data flow. Um, now you have to either schedule it to refresh, which is the proper way of doing it. You schedule it on a time basis and the um, schedule refresh limitation is similar to your Power BI account. Eight times a day with Pro, 48 times a day with um, the uh, premium or uh, embedded capacity uh, or dedicated capacity, let's say. Uh, or I can re refresh it now for now. I will do it just manually. Now, while that one is refreshing, I go back to my Power BI desktop. I start get data and I choose Power BI data flows. That is one of the options here. If you don't see the option over there, then under more. Under Power Platform, you see Power BI data flows. And while I'm explaining that, you see also there is something called Power Platform data flows, which is a little bit different, but in principles very similar to that. This is more um, related to like CDS command data services with Power Apps and Power Automate and things like that. So I'm going to select Power BI data flows. Now you need to log in with your account. I've already done that. I'll see all the workspaces that I have access to. All of those workspaces that has a um, data flow at least under that. Now this is the workspace I've been working with and the data flow name is Power BI tips data flow. Yep, here it is. I'll expand that and this is my date table. Now imagine this persona right now. Let's say I am a data modeler. I am a data modeler. I'm building this Power BI file of customer product sales table. I need to bring a date table, but I'm not a Power Query person. I don't really know how to create a date table and I don't really care how to create a date table. All I need is an existing date table that I can rely on, that I can use it in my solutions. Now, I've heard from some guy that uh, is, who is good at Power Query that he created a date table under a data flow. I can easily go and use it by just having access to that data flow, selecting it and clicking on load. I don't need to do any transformations. I don't need to do any anything on top of it. I just get that data as a table. I plug it into my model using like relationships, whatever is needed. I'm not going to do that right now because this is not a report development demo. Uh, then I can start doing my visualization. I am totally separated from the development work of this date table. We have separated the power query work, the data preparation or data transformation work from the modeling work using data flow. This creates like an abstract layer of your data transformation uh, beside all other parts in your model. Okay, now the next part is data set. Do we have any other questions before oh. I jump into? Okay. Uh, well, uh, one that's kind of similar here. Well, Fernando asks um, a data model that uses several several dimension tables. I think I can already see Fernando as a SQL guy. Yeah, I have a data model that uses several dim tables and they can all go into a data flow and I have maybe a fact table, for example, sales and the fact table could be in a different data flow. So he's, I think he's yeah. been asking here, can I have multiple tables from different data flows coming together into the same Power BI report? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Each data flow is like a data source, like, okay. like the fact that you can have get data from like this SQL Server database, that Excel file and things like that. You can get data from this data flow, that data flow, and that data flow. And this is uh, one of the practices to actually spread your work. Uh, like for example, that thing that Fernando mentioned is a good example because for example, let's say the sales table, it's a transactional table. This is under an operational system. You might get data in this table every hour, right? You build it in a data flow and you schedule it to refresh every hour. However, your other tables, like your product table, you don't really have a product produced every hour. Um, um, you have others in a schedule ref in another data flow that you can schedule it to, to refresh under, let's say, um, a daily process or a weekly process. So separating it in different data flows helps you to have like different schedules on those. 
And on the other hand side, in Power BI, you can get data from all of those at the same time. Wonderful. Great. And you can and you can you made the note right. You can go between workspaces. I can have two workspaces. One I can have I can have workspace A and workspace B, and I can grab it from both those two different workspaces together. Exactly. Yeah. That is also again another practice of like best practices of doing data flows to have um, like some of the tables that you think is more generic to have them all under like general workspace, like for example, date table, timetable, currency table, things such as that. I usually keep them under like a general workspace mm -hmm. and I give it access to most of like data modelers in my tenant. But oh, cool. uh, for example, if I have a sales uh, data flow, I keep it under another workspace that I only give it access to those who are going to use it. Nice. So you, you really start actually trying to make like um, you're, you're really talking about data warehousing at an, at an entire Power BI level where you can start saying these are reusable elements. I'm going to put them in a common place for the whole organization to kind of leverage, reuse, you know, consume on a regular basis. Exactly, exactly. Excellent. And especially, uh, yep. I like it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, especially uh, the fact that you can these days also certify data flows. Previously, we had the option to certify data sets. Now you can certify data flows and say this is a good data flow to use. I'll talk about like certifying data set a little bit later for everyone to understand how that process works as well. Excellent. Thank you. OK, uh, next part is data set. So I've talked about data flow. Now, what is a data set? First, I need to elaborate a little bit what is a data set and then talk about how these works together and what is a shared data set. In Power BI environment, data set is an object that is not really easy to understand what it is. Why? Because when you have Power BI desktop environment, when you are developing a report in Power BI desktop environment, all you see is inside Power BI desktop. You see your report there, you see your data there, you see your connection to the data source there, the relationships, calculations, DAX, everything is in one Power BI desktop environment. So we think that this solution is this PBIX file. The fact is that that is kind of the solution, but in fact that is like two separate objects. If you have Power BI Desktop open, if you go to Task Manager in your machine, under Power BI Desktop, you'll see this service running, Microsoft SQL Server Analysis Services. Even if you uh, run Power BI Desktop on a machine that doesn't have SQL Server Analysis Services, you would still see it because alongside with Power BI Desktop, when you install Power BI Desktop, this automatically installs as well. This is a specific instance of analysis services called tabular mode. And this is an in-memory engine data, um, let's say data modeling service. This is in Power BI world where the tables lives, where the data of those tables lives, where their relationships, calculations, DAX calculations lives, where the connection to the data source, all of these are in there. That object that lives there, we call it data set. Uh, other parts of your report is visualizations, filters, slicers, uh, the report layout, theme, and pages, and things like that. Those are a layer on top of it. So you have like a report, you have a data set. In Power BI website, you see this separation a little bit easier because we have a section for data set, a section for reports. Uh, and Recently, the new look and feel of the Power BI website is even a little bit different from this, but you'll see like a content and you see a data uh, flows and data sets. So these are separate objects. Okay, now that you know what the data set is, let's talk about this challenge. Let's say you have multiple report visualizers. Report visualizers are people who are good at building visualizations. They know quite good about graphics and user experience. They know how to put charts together, something that I'm not really good at. Um, and uh, but, but they are not good at, let's say, writing DAX expressions. They want to use a model. Now, I've built the model. I can give them the model. I can give them the file and say, go ahead and build your report. Give one to this person, one to that person, one to that person. But then we have the problem of source code spreading everywhere, right? Every time I change it, I have to give it, give them a new copy. Or alternatively, we can use shared data set. 
Shared data set is something that have been in Power BI from the very beginning when Power BI uh, came, let's say Power BI version two in July 2015, we had the concept of shared data set even from the very beginning there. But in fact, it wasn't that much bold so that people can notice it. A shared data set is a data set that can be that is used in multiple reports. Every data set can be used in multiple reports. So that means that every data set can be a shared data set. Default is that when you publish a Power BI file, you have one data set, one report, one one. But uh, you can have um, you can change that. You can have one data set, ten reports, hundreds of reports, and that is a concept of shared data set because then you can have the model in one place all visualizations using this model, separating your modeling and visualization layers. How you can do that in the Power BI website, we have this little create new button, new report button right beside the data set, which is a way to create a new report. And in the Power BI desktop, we have the option to say get data from Power BI data set, which is what I'm going to show you right now. Now for this example, I have a workspace with a data set. Let's say this is a workspace. I also have a report here. This is my report movies uh, report. This is like movies, uh, sales information and rating information of movies, things like that. Let's say I've built this report. I've spent some time building this report. Uh, the visualization is OK, but it's never as good as visualizations that Mike can do. So I want Mike. You're too to nice. Go... <laughs> you're, too, you're too nice. <laughs> <laughs> I want Mike to go and create a visualization on top of it, but um, but I'm not going to give them a copy of the file because every time I change something, I have to give him again another copy of that. So what I'll what I'll do is I'll give him access to use this data set. Every report, if I go to view related, I would be able to see like this is a data set for that report. Now from this data set, right even here, I can go and create a report. Or if I give access to this data set to Mike, he can open Power BI desktop um, and log in with his account, of course, uh, in Power BI desktop. Use get data from Power BI data set, this option. Power BI data set. Um, and then uh, he would be able to see all the um, data sets that he has access to. Either he created himself or someone created this for him and he has access to it. Um, and he can go and find that data set and select it. Here also you see a little like a labeling system. This column, this is specific column called endorsement. This is a labeling system in Power BI datasets and data flows. We have this option uh, certified, promoted, and those that has no labeling system. This is the concept of like gold, silver, bronze report. Uh, if, for example, I have developed a data set, I haven't really done any testing and things like that. I don't really promote it to any levels. But if I've done some testing uh, myself, some different scenarios, and I'm pretty sure that this is going to be a good uh, working um, model for others to use, I promoted one level. And another level is that like, for example, if you have a test team that they've been through some testing process, some um, testing scenarios, and and they've verified that this is good to be working with, they can promote it even one level higher to certify. This is basically just a labeling system, but very good for the user because uh, those that are certified comes at the top, then those that are promoted, and then at the end, those that are uh, that has no labels. So user can choose the one that is more reliable. In this case, movies data set is the one that I'm going to select. So I'll select that one. And when I create the connection, this will create a live connection to that Power BI data set. You can see it, um, oops, sorry, wrong button. You can see it here that I have live connection to that Power BI data set in that workspace. Live connection means that I can still do the visualization, but I cannot do much modeling. I would be able to see also how the model looks like, uh, but I won't be able to uh, do any data transformation or anything like that, I would be able to easily visualize this data. I can bring, for example, the studio 
and the sales, which is worldwide sales, and changing it to become a donut chart because that's apparently something that a lot of people like. Also, it is not a good chart to use. So I'm using that. That's and correct. then <laughs> and then another visual I'm using, let's say, a bar chart with uh, movies titles and their sales. Right. So I can go ahead and build a visualization without even knowing how that model built, without even knowing how any cal how calculations in that model working. I'm, let's say, uh, building visualization on a model that I'm not uh, familiar in terms of how to develop. But I can build this, and after building this, let me save this file. I'm going to save it in here. Power BI tips movie sample. I'm going to publish it. You can even publish it to another workspace. In this case, I just publish it to the same workspace. Um, and here it is, the report is published. I'm going back to the website, Power BI website. I would be able to see that report. Here it is, Power BI tips movie sample. And this is that report with that fantastic donut chart over here. Uh, now I can go and see the view related to see which data set this is connected to. And you can see this is exactly the same data set that the other report used. So this data set is now a shared data set. Now, in fact, if I go to that data set, if I go and find it, here it is, um, I can click on view lineage of this data set. Previously, it was view related. Now it is view lineage. Uh, same thing, uh, but it shows you like a lineage view, which is a great way of seeing this. Now you can see that this uh, data set is actually used in many reports. Um, like a lot of reports are using this data set, and that means every time I have this data set refreshed, all of these reports will get the new data. This is separation of the visualization layer, which is all of these reports from the modeling layer, which is this shared data set. And in real world scenarios, I mean, in better implementation, this data set itself should not get directly data from the data source. This should get data from a data flow, which is going to be the next part I'm going to talk about, which is the architecture. Before that, have we got any? Any questions? Yeah, we had we had a couple questions. Um, one was, uh, is it possible to connect to the Power BI data set from Excel? And then also like the same question from data flows. For data flows, that feature is coming. Like in Excel, you should be able to get data from data flows, but not now. Uh, um, yeah, I think it would be not, not far away that you can get data from uh, data flows in Excel. Uh, for Power BI data sets in Excel, that's something that I haven't checked it out. If you have premium, you can definitely do that because every uh, premium workspace using XMLA endpoint, you get the endpoint that you can connect to it, even like a SQL Server analysis services. But directly from Power BI dataset from Excel, I think that is also under development. Is that the same thing as using Analyze in Excel? Uh, Analyze in Excel works, yep, yep. If you use Analyze in Excel, you don't really need to do that. You just uh, yeah. get the data set, you click on Analyze in Excel and you get that, yep. That's uh, definitely so a better option. So I think a data flow you can't get it to, but you can do an Analyze in Excel directly from a data model that has already living set. inside. In, inside the analysis. And I honestly, I would think you'd probably want to go after the data model piece because you've already enriched the data to a level that exactly, is yes. usable and you want your end users to connect to the model. So I don't, maybe there's a use case where you want to go hit the, the, the data flow directly and get the raw data. But I, I realistically, I think you'd probably want to be going after the, the data model, which is which is the analyze and Excel feature. Correct, yes, yeah. Only only for scenarios that someone is creating a model inside Excel, like some planning model that you need Excel to be part of that. For oh, those, yeah. you might need that, yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, any other questions? I have a question, yeah. um, just in general. What has your experience been with like performance and how many rows or or you know, I know there's a limitation on how many, how deep you can go. I know you can go like five layers deep, and I think that's what you're going to talk about next. But like, 
like what kind of data sets have you pushed through these things and when does it start not performing well or does it always perform well i don't i don't understand that part of it yet so maybe you can speak to some of your experience there yeah i i'd say for um data flows we are talking about i guess right yeah i'm asking specifically yeah. for data flows that's kind of a newer thing i haven't played a ton with large yes. volumes of data yeah so when we talk about data flows it is good for like uh small tables mid-scale tables that you mentioned like if i have a dimension if i have a date table if i have a product dimension even let's say if it is like one million rows it's still fine but if we are talking about like a fact table a sales transaction table um, that has like um, hundreds of millions of rows sometimes billions of rows just a data flow just by itself won't be performing well. The reason is that consider that scenario of uh, Power BI, uh, Power BI working environment in the Power BI website. If I have my own Power BI account, if it is Power BI Pro account, then I'm using a shared capacity, a shared memory and CPU. Uh, I can only push that onto certain uh, limit of the rows. It will get starting slow. It will start pagination on the disk, disk and it will make everything slow. So if I have a really large um, data set, I need to do some uh, other things about it. First, having premium capacity helps because I have my own uh, dedicated uh, environment uh, to work with, dedicated uh, CPU and uh, memory. That is an, that is one thing. Another thing is that if you have Power BI Premium, there is something called uh, the com enhanced computed engine, enhanced compute engine, which works quite well for some of the transformations that are um, uh, like blocking transformations, like merge, group by, and things like that. It put uh, uh, more power on those transformations behind the scene that actually uses a, a really interesting uh, feature that loads that CSV files into SQL engine. So enhanced compute engine behind the scene is like a SQL database server, but it's not called a SQL database server because it might be anything else. We call it enhanced compute engine. Now this engine provides also parallel processing. So it also uh, supports like query folding, which makes the whole thing much faster when it works in that scenarios. Uh, so things like that would speed up the performance. But if I just use like a normal Power BI account, or if I use Power BI Premium without the enhanced compute engine, without leveraging the computed entity, without any of these consideration, uh, data flow won't be that much powerful to process the data. If I use those features, yeah, I've seen this can process like big scale data. I don't really have a number in my mind, but I've seen this that process really large data sets. Okay, cool. I just kind of was gauging the scale here so people can understand, you know, if, I, if I'm doing Databricks level things, I probably shouldn't be doing those in data flows, but if I'm doing minor to medium SQL level things, it probably could handle it. Yeah, and, and, and the thing is that like if I have um, that kind of, it, it also depends on case by case. Like if I have the um, license for data breaks or data factory, or I have also the resources to build that, that is a different scenario than I have only, let's say, Power BI resources and I have Power BI uh, premium license. So all like different scenarios. That thing that you mentioned is a good Good example to use that if I don't have that resources, if I don't have that licenses, then I might go this one. So, Good point. Seth was nodding his head. Do you have a thought around that, that Seth? Yeah. No, it, it, it is a really good point. You know, I, I think we, we each get stuck in our own environment sometimes or, you know, the, the current project. And, and the reality is, is data flows opens a, a huge window, right, to be able to, you know, extend solutions um, with with just the licensing that you're using, um, which yes. there, there are a lot of parallels. Um, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm in much, much in the big data space with all those tools, and I, I hadn't really thought, you know, uh, about that specifically about data flows, but you know, in, in that light, right? Like the way I was looking at it was, um, you know, we have these tools, we have these licenses that we're pushing around large volumes of data and it's not a good fit for me. But the reverse of that is, you know, th this is a great tool to start, you know, engineering things um, with those same theories in mind um, that we're using in, in the bigger data space. So yeah, uh, good good thoughts there, Reza. Love it. Thank you. Good stuff, Reza. Back to Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. 
so the final part of this presentation is how now we use the data flow and data set in a good architecture, how this plays in an architecture that can work in a multi-developer environment and can also work with a single developer, but in like scenario of using multiple solutions. Uh, this is a good architecture to follow based on my experience. Uh, this is a multi-layered architecture, let's, let's say a three-layer architecture that we have data flows, data flows, uh, responsible for data transformation. They get the data from sources, Excel, SQL Server, Oracle, CSV file, anything. They do all the transformations through that process. If you are dealing with like a large amount of data, leveraging computed entities to make it faster, the enhanced compute engine, all of those. But at the end, this will store the data into Azure Data Lake as CSV files. And then, uh, the next layer after this would be the shared data set or shared data model, whatever you might call it. This is a set of data marts, which might be multiple data marts because you can have like a data mart for purchasing, a data mart for HR, a data mart for, um, let's say, sales. They can have some of the tables shared, and that is not a problem at all because their tables are coming from data flows. Uh, the person who builds data marts is a person who is good at DAX, at writing calculations, at creating relationships between tables and things like that. The person who creates data flow is a person who is good at power query, writing M scripts and things like that, two different skill sets. And then last one, the last layer is the visualization layer. I can have uh, some report visualizers. They are good at graphics and building good um, uh, user experience together. Uh, they build reports on top of the data model created. These three layers of visualization makes it possible that uh, three different types of um, developers work in this solution at the same time. And because it is layered, it helps users to switch between something. Like that question that we got uh, earlier uh, about Excel. Some of users are good at Excel like a lot of Power BI users, they are coming from Excel background. They know Excel like the back of their hands. Uh, they can use Excel with that analyzing Excel that Mike mentioned, not export. Don't use export uh, in Excel, <laughs> export to Excel. Use analyzing Excel, which is much better, not those limitations that the export has, and it is live. right? That means then if I am good at Excel, I can use Excel connecting to that shared data set. Um, some other visualization tools, I'm not talking about those, they are okay tools, right? But uh, but they don't really have a modeling engine like Tableau, Click and things like that. They are quite like not up to the point with their modeling engine. Power BI, however, is really fantastic with, the, uh, with its modeling. You can see uh, one of the presentation that Christian Wade uh, has like analyzing petabytes of data with the speed of like clicky clicky draggy droppy <laughs> speed. Uh, that is something you can't get out of those tools. However, Tableau and some other visualization tools are good visualization tools, right? And sometimes your board of directors decide to use that as a visualization tool, which is fine. You can use those to connect to a Power BI data model. That is a premium functionality, actually. Uh, you can use uh, XMLA endpoint, which is a way that you can connect to a Power BI data model, and that means your visualization layer can be totally uh, something else, connecting to uh, Power BI model using the same three-layer architecture we had. Or paginated reports. Paginated reports is a set of reports that you can design for uh, printing. You can say, I want like this much margin on this side. I want this to be like an A3 page. I want the pagination to happen like this. I want page header, page footer, things like that. You can design a really nice paginated report style, and that can get data from Power BI dataset. That means your visualization layer can be like anything using this. Um, because this is layered, you can easily switch this to something else. Let's say after some time you decide to move from here to Azure Analysis Services for some reason. You can easily change it because this is only your data modeling layer, right? So um, having this layered architecture helps a lot because everything is modular, everything is layered. And this is not a new architecture. What I'm talking about is not something that I invent myself. I'm not really an idea person. Um, 
this is something coming out of uh, all the architecture diagrams we had before, like the one you see in the left hand side here. This had a name called BI Burger back in the old days. And um, this is how we um, design solutions with SQL Server integration services, analysis services, reporting services, performance point on top of it, all of those things together, or the BI semantic model. They've been also talking about the multi-layered architecture. And this is the same multi-layered architecture we are talking about. The difference, however, is that with this new multi-layered architecture, we are using uh, Power BI components. We are using shared data set and we are using data flow. Uh, what are benefits of this? Of course, this will decouple all of these layers, visualization, modeling, and the data preparation. It also, um, is not a really hardcore developer tool. I don't need someone to go and read a whole book on SSIS or pass a set of courses on SQL Server to learn how to work with Dataflow. This is a Power Query environment, and uh, much easier for user to go and work with or shared data set is uh, DAX and Power BI. Now, I'm not saying DAX is simple because everyone would hammer me on that at the moment, but I, at least we are working in the Power BI environment, right? You need only Power BI developers to work with this. There are lots of benefits in this environment. These are just few of those benefits that I listed here, and I explained all of those already. Now, uh, one thing uh, to wrap it up, uh, when I explain about the data flow and data set, I still get this question that um, they both stores data. Can I use data flow inside data set or data set inside data flow? Uh, sorry, data flow instead of data set or data set instead of data flow. Um, you shouldn't be doing that. These are two components that are complement of each other. They are not, um, let's say, replacement of each other. Data set is replacement of your DAX relationships calculations. Uh, data flow is replacement of your power query. The person who builds data flow should be good at power query. The person who builds data set should be good at DAX and relationships. The result of a data set is used for report visualizers to build something. The report, the result of data flow is not for report visualizers. It's for data modelers to go and use it. Um, some, some of them I explained it here, but uh, the main thing is that data flow solves the problems of having one table to be used in multiple places. You solve it with a data flow, you build it in one place and reuse it. Data set solving the problem of using one model in multiple visualizations. Instead of copying that model across, you have one model shared as a shared data set across multiple visualizations. Uh, so that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. I have a video course on Power BI architecture and a book as well. Feel free to check it out. Um, I have many other Power BI video courses in Radicat Academy, and this is a code, uh, Power BI tips discount code that you Ooh. can use uh, to get $30 discount for the first month of our Academy membership. Awesome. Love it. Thank you. Great, great presentation. I love this stuff around data flows, and I I feel like the architecture for the, some of this stuff is is very interesting right now um, because I'm I'm seeing a very neat mirrored pattern between what you do in like big data, right? So if you have a, a big data or lots of data, you you pick it up, you do some transformations to it, and you put it back down in the lake somewhere, you, and then you pick it up again, and then you do some more transformation, and you put it back down, and you kind of the 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 modern more data warehouse technology seems to be kind of doing this bronze silver gold kind of enrichment slowly of your data because the storage is so cheap you just kind of keep it there and yes. so now now seeing that there's tooling now with data flows that is doing a very similar pattern of pick up transform put down pick up transform put down and then pick up for reporting seems to make a lot of sense to me Yes, yeah, and, and it opens a lot of channels for, let's say, data integration or ETL developer or data engineer, because 
now when you think about all of that, it's not just like one data flow getting data from a source and storing it in a CSV file. This can be like a bunch of data flows. One data flow as like a staging data flow, another data flow as a transformation data flow on top of it, which makes it source independent. So at some scenarios, if that source system migrated to a new system, I can just change my staging data flow. So there are lots of like data integration concepts coming beside this, which can be really interesting. Well, Reza, I don't think we have any more questions. Um, Reza, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate you, you spending your morning with us uh, and then looking forward to hanging out with you at the pub and just kind of knocking back. Or I guess you have to drink root beer. It's the middle of your day. You don't want to drink beer. At this, at this <laughs> yes, hour. It is. Maybe it is, it is if it's stressful, but uh, we're going to go over there and we're going to hang out a little bit and chat some more about just data, Power BI things, uh, ask questions. And we, we call this session, I, as for lack of a better term, stump the chumps, right? So you got, you know, <laughs> Seth and myself, and you have Reza, who's very knowledgeable and has seen a lot of these Power BI spaces. Uh, this is just an, a time for you guys to, to, you know, ask us some questions. Uh, you know, if you're having a problem, you know, throw it out there, or you know, you're thinking about data a certain way. Help us understand it. You know, th that's the kind of area we will definitely give you our opinions. They are maybe not right or wrong. I don't know, <laughs> but we'll definitely give you our opinions about uh, the data, the, the data stuff as as it relates to Power BI. So, thank you very much, Reza. We'll see well, you on the other thank video. You. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you on the other side.